Alright, in this build video, we are going to set up the motor controller and then control the robot chassis remotely from a remote Linux machine. If you haven't done so already before starting this video, please get your remote server set up. The link to the steps from GitHub is in the video description. All right, so we should have the chassis as we had it set up last time. Um, and all we'll need this time if for extra parts is the Adafruit motor bonnet here and the this 40 pin uh, extension header that we're gonna put on the Raspberry Pi GPIO. So um, first thing to do that I here to make this easy is actually stick this into the motor bonnet. You wanna make sure that it's all the way pushed in and that you can have pins coming out the top so we can add more to that later. Then we can put this on here. Um, I adjusted from the last video the standoffs here so that I have the male side of the standoffs p pointing up. That actually makes this easier. You don't have to do that, but if you want to, I think this that, that holds this on a little better. And then we want to put this on and just make sure that the terminal blocks are facing towards the inside of the board, not the outside of the board. Um, this isn't keyed, so if you put it in backwards, you could end up with shorts and break everything. Um, just squish that on there, should be good. And then we can hook up the power and the motors to this. So um, we wanna hook up the, the right motor first, and that's gonna go in this the first two slots of this terminal block, this screw in terminal block here, you can see um, it's labeled M1 for these two. And don't worry about putting them in the right order. We'll get that figured out after. In fact, I'm going to purposefully put this one backwards so I can show you how to troubleshoot that. So let's get started there. And that's one. Then you hook this other wire from the right motor to the next one. And now let's do the left motor. Now you want to skip this third terminal block, screw terminal block. That's a ground there. So these two are the next motor. So we'll get these. All right, so now we've got the motors hooked up, but we need to give power to the motors. So we want to take the 12 volt power delivery USB-C adapter we put together in the last video and hook that up to the voltage in of the motor bonnet. Now this one, of course, um, you wanna be very careful to not put in backwards because you don't wanna send 12 volts backwards through this. So make sure you put the negative side in the negative side and the positive side in the positive side. Okay, now that is all set. So what we can do now is power this up. Um, what we're going to do is plug in the USB-C here to our battery. We always do the USB-C first because if we do it second, it sends a power surge through and makes the Raspberry Pi power cycle. And then we'll plug in the Raspberry Pi as well. And we don't need to hook up HDMI at this time. Let's get all these wires out of the way. You don't want them to be hitting the wheels. We got that turned on and it's starting up. Uh, last thing I recommend is we want to put this up on blocks for some testing. Can you get something to do for that here? There we go. Now the wheels aren't touching anything and we can test them. And let's go ahead and switch to the computer. Okay, let's see if we can make Robot go. So um, if you've got your uh, remote server set up, I'm running this here in VirtualBox. Should look somewhat like this. Okay, let's um, open up a terminal window 
And the first thing we want to make sure is that we've got Robot on the same network here. So if we turn Robot on and you have already set the Raspberry Pi up to hook up to your Wi-Fi, um, and you're on the same Wi-Fi network here, we should be able to reach Robot just with a ping, robot.local. And that looks good. You can control C to stop that. Okay, that's great news. Um, the next thing we we'll want to do is make sure that the code base that we're running from is the latest and greatest. It can change at any time So um, for robots. So we'll want to do uh, change to the robot folder. And we'll want to do git pull. And see, one file was changed. Now in this case, it's only the readme, but um, it was updated. And now we should be able to test. So we can test by going to CD Intels. And you want to run Python 3.9 keyboard controller Pi. And what this will do is open up this little Pi game window if everything's right. And what we should be able to do is click, you have to click in the window and you can use your arrow keys. Uh, to make Robud's tracks turn. Let's try it. All right, that's working. Now, if we've got the window set up here, right, you can see I'm hitting forward. It's saying move forward. I'll move this so that we can see this better. Say move forward, but the, um, the right wheel is going backwards, just as I expected. So if you find you're going forward and they're both moving fine, but one or both are going backwards, what we need to do is just swap the motor terminals in the terminal block. So I'll go over here and do that now. Now, as long as you don't short any power to ground in this situation, you should be fine doing this live doing this hot. So let's put this in one in here and take this guy and put it here. All right, let's try that again. So forward, back, right, left. And it's working. Now, say you try that and it doesn't work. First thing that we'll want to check let me control C out of this, is to make sure that the motor service is running on Robud. Um, to do that, uh, we can SSH into Robud. So I'll actually create a new tab here. And we'll do SSH Robud at robud.local. And that's okay, because it's the Raspberry Pi now. And we'll put in Robud's password. And now we're on Robud. So, um, Robud runs um, with systemd services, including its motor controller. So what we can do is we do sudo systemctl list hyphen units robud dot star, and then we want to do hyphen hyphen all to make sure it shows even stop services. And in fact, you don't have to do sudo to this since you're not running anything. Um, but you can see here we've got the motors service running, which is the most important thing. And we've got some dead services here. And that's fine because there's no camera hooked up. There's no orientation sensors hooked up. There's no uh, time of flight sensor hooked up. So those are all good things. All right. So um, let's just say you see this and it is not loaded if it says, if it says inactive dead for the Robud Motors service. What you do um, is, actually I'll stop it now so we can see that. So I'll do sudo systemctl stop robud.motors motor service. And that stopped it. So if we take a look at it now, we should see, again, it says inactive debt. So all you'll need to do is do sudo systemctl. And where I put stop here, we're going to say start. So sudo systemctl start. And 
To type this out, you can actually use tab to autofill it. So if you just type out roba.m, that should be enough, and then hit tab, it will fill it out for you. And you click enter. And now, if we list again, by just clicking on the up arrows to go back to my previous commands fast, we click here and we see that it is active and running. And if we go back to the keyboard controller here, I can make robots go. So, all right, let's have some fun. So if you have stuck with me this long, um, we should be able to actually make Robot go, and I think that'd be pretty fun for you and Cathartic. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Here goes Robot, just using the arrow keys to control him. You should be able to control Robot just fine, as long as uh, as long as they stay in your uh, Wi-Fi range. There you go. Have fun. Um, um, and I'll see you next time.